Well, in a team workshop that I was facilitating last week, there were a few individuals during the workshop who admitted to the rest of the group that they kind of think they're right all the time. They have a hard time admitting if they're wrong. And I appreciated their vulnerability and their honesty. And the truth is, I think most of us fall in that camp. We maybe just don't transparently admit it like they did. I can remember back in 2020, after that tough end of the school year when the pandemic hit, several of my friends over the summer decided that they were going to homeschool their children the next year to create a really cool experience for them to make the best of this challenging season. And I decided I wanted to be part of that. I wanted to give my girls the same experience. And so I researched and I planned all summer and I came up with this strategy to be able to work in the afternoons after homeschooling in the mornings. And my husband was a little bit cautious for a number of reasons, but he was trying to be supportive. And we jumped into it. And after one week of homeschooling, uh, we had a heart to heart and he said, you know, I really think we should send the girls back to school. And I was so mad that he brought this opposing perspective to my perfect plan. I can remember that night going for a walk in the dark in my neighborhood, just kind of fuming and trying to, to come back down to reality. Well, after some more discussions, we did decide to send them back to school. And thank goodness we did, because my kindergartner did not want to learn from me that year. We already had some troubles that first week. And let's be honest, Mrs. Gormley created the most amazing crafts with 25 kindergartners that I couldn't have even <laughs> done on my own with Harper at home. It's pretty amazing. I always tell teachers, you know, I only lasted one week homeschooling. I'm so impressed at what you handle. But it was this interesting scenario of I had done all the research, I had come up with the plan, I was just owning this solution that I was really, really protective about it and I did not want to consider any outside ideas, especially from somebody who hadn't done the research, who didn't have the background on it. Kind of silly. The truth is this happens all the time in the workplace. Maybe you've been the owner of a project or a certain area at work. Maybe you've been the primary decision maker on something. And it's hard when somebody else has a different perspective or asks a question that challenges what you're doing when they don't have the same background, they don't really know this area. We feel really resistant to considering their ideas and their perspective. And so if this is you, and if you've maybe been working in a little bit of a silo in some space for a while, here's my challenge for you this week, that you will schedule a one hour meeting where you're going to invite some different perspectives to come in. You're gonna share a quick update on where you're at with this project or this space that you own, and you are going to invite new ideas. You're going to invite challenging questions. You are going to have an open brainstorming session where your job is to listen and absorb and consider what they are sharing. And after the meeting, you can decide what to do next, but I would encourage you to just embrace as much curiosity and openness as possible during that brainstorming session and see what comes of it. See what new ideas, new thoughts, new ways of approaching problems might surface through this collaborative brainstorming session where maybe, just maybe, you don't have all the answers. You may be wrong in some areas, or it may just be something to build on the goodness that you're already creating. I hope that you will pause and invite some new, fresh perspectives and insights into the space that you own.